phone company. See, this is an old phone. This phone's been out here for years, all right? It's an old phone, so you don't have to pay it. But the newer ones, it's not the... It's not the... Uh, it's not the 1-800 number that's charging you. It's the phone company. But they, some of them do. So, it's, well, uh, yeah, you can call on the phone down at 7-Eleven on 15th. There's a pay phone in there. There's no charge on it either. But... There used to be two pay phones by the 99 cent store, and they used to charge you 25 cents for 10 minutes. Okay. And each 10 minutes you had about a quarter of it, because the phones, some of them, on 1-800 numbers, depending on the phone company, have changed to where you have to pay. Listen, you're not calling, you're not paying for the phone number of the place, you're paying for the use of the phone. Way we do. That's the way it works. See, it's like phone calls used to be a quarter and fifty cents. We're talking about regular phone calls. Now a lot of phone calls on a lot of phones are one dollar. Okay. Yeah. Some places you go, pay phones fifty cents. Other places you the pay phone over there on the corner on Charleston there when you make uh, a call unless it's changed. It's 50 cents. It's for a local call. But the pay phone here for a local call. And this one, I, I, this is my guide stick. That's what they call it. I see it in my curbs. Let me tell you, when you got a guide stick and you're blind, okay, it's like I'm walking along here, okay. I'm trying to find the bench. There's a bench. I'm trying to find the, excuse me. I'm trying to find the curb. Here's the curb. Sure. Okay, I'm going to the phone. Okay, I get to the phone. Stick in my hand. See what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 sure. It, 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 it notifies you when you're above something or close to something. Uh, I don't want any other stick. I like this one right here. This is fine. I get Social Security. That's from working at jobs for several years. And then the government puts a supplement with that because it's not enough to live off of to pay rent. I don't have a house. I'm poor. I don't get that kind of money to oh, stay, okay. yeah. But I mean, I don't, it, it, I, I, it's part, of, part of my money is from Social Security, from working the jobs, working jobs through the years. What I'm saying is, is the government doesn't set anybody up for what you call exquisite living. I mean, you're not gonna go down the street and pay on government money $800 a month rent. Because if you do, you're not going to be able to eat. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I couldn't live off either check. I, I wouldn't be able to live off either check because either each check is not enough to pay rent and live off of. Oh, if you were homeless on the street, but you couldn't pay rent. See, I don't get a bunch of food stamps. So I have to spend my money on food and rent. I mean, eating's a big factor nowadays, even out of the store, because food isn't that cheap. Come on, $3.50 for a loaf of bread? You know that bread at the regular store, some loaves are $5 a loaf? And oh, stuff. yeah, that one, yeah. Yeah, now, I can drink that water, but I can't drink water out of a, a pipe or out of a... I can't do it because I get sick to my stomach all the time, but sometimes I couldn't afford water, sometimes I could. So when I couldn't, I'd take faucet water and boil it and drink it, and in it, then I didn't get sick on it. But if I drink it right out of the faucet, I get sick on it. It upsets my stomach. Yeah.
dildo. My book has blood in it. Dildos don't bleed if you chop it in half with an axe. But I'm going to chop my dick in half and see how much that bleeds. I'm sick of this phony baloney. That motherfucker gets hard and horny. I gotta buy him pussy. And I can't buy him nice paper to write my book on. I just want him to piss, piss, and piss. That's it, no come. I'm going broke buying pussy for that motherfucker. He's just going to piss when I chop him in half. I'll piss in a pussy like it's a toilet. I'll piss all over a fucking trot like it's in a toilet. Every pussy looks like a toilet to me. A big shitty toilet. You. I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad, bad boy. A bad boy. I'm a bad, bad boy. Whoops. Whoops. A 
I'm a good boy. I'm a good, good boy. I'm a good boy. I'm a good, good boy. No, oh, you're a bad boy. You're a bad, bad boy. You're a bad boy. You're a bad, bad boy. Whoops. I'm a good boy. I'm a good, good boy. I'm a good boy. I'm a good, good boy. Yeah. Bye, Brooke. It's nice talking to you. So you want me to stop it? I'm a disabled veteran, 100% disabled veteran from Vietnam. I was in, I was in the Navy in Vietnam. Just, my name's Curtis. Don't put my last name. I was in the war in seven. I was, I was a prisoner in August of 19, in Vietnam in Saigon in 1970. A place called Cho Long. Her dad was in First World War. Wow. And I asked him how did I said, Granddaddy, how did you survive World War One? He said, I, I, I ate cow patties to survive. But he was from the U.S. He was in part of the U.S. Army. I ride the bus 24/7. I'm glad that the president gave those uh, Medal of Honor winners. Oh yeah, I had a medal. It was a National Defense Medal. Talking to this fellow from Stoppick, who my mother passed away January 4th, and her mother was from France. And her father, I asked him how he survived uh, World War One. He said, we, I had to eat cow patties to survive. Okay. Well, good luck with your life. My, my, first, my first opportunity to make investment was Mary Kay Cosmetics in 1968, but my mother said we're not interested in money, so I joined the military. It was going to be uh, get, you know, available to me by a fellow who had just bought a seat on the New York Stock Exchange. But my mother didn't want it, so uh, I, I didn't make the... My last investment I could have made was uh, wind at resorts at $10, but my mother didn't want that in, so I, I missed that.
of Fort Worth, my grandfather Dulaney, D-U-L-A-N-E, not D-E-D-U, he built the Sinclair Building in Fort Worth, and his home is one of the greatest homes ever built. But I've been living here all over 30 some odd years. I live right down the street. You don't know who he was. No. He was chief of staff at the time. When he came and visited us, I thought we were done. But, and then I, but when, I, when I got captured in, in Saigon, I was an English teacher to, to uh, Vietnamese uh, officers that were going to come to the United States. You. I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad, bad boy. A bad boy. I'm a bad, bad boy. Whoops. Whoops. I'm a good boy. I'm a good, good boy. I'm a good boy. I'm a good, good boy. No, you're a bad boy. You're a bad, bad boy. You're a bad boy. You're a bad, bad boy. Whoops! I'm a good boy! I'm a good, good boy! I'm a good boy! I'm a good, good boy! Yeah! Bye, Brooke! It's nice talking to you! So you want me to stop it?